This is a podcast from the Nuffield Department of Medicine. Professor Paul Klenerman talks about our relationship with persistent viruses such as hepatitis C. Hello, Paul. Hello. Can you tell us about our relationship with persistent viruses? We, we encounter viruses throughout our life, and some of them we deal with really well, so we, we can control those beautifully. Um, and others are trickier and they can set up long-term infection. Some of the ones that set up long-term infection actually do us relatively little harm, but other ones cause problems over time, partly because the immune response is still trying to eliminate them and there's damage in the tissue that the virus is existing in. And those are the ones that we're really focusing on. Can you give us an example? The virus we're most keenly interested in is hepatitis C. And this is an interesting virus because some people are able to clear the virus when they first encounter it. So their immune response is really good, whereas unfortunately the majority of people are unable to do so. So the virus then sets up long-term infection and that's where the tissue damage, in this case to the liver, can occur. And what is our immune response to a hepatitis C virus infection? So in the first few weeks of infection, that's the really critical time. Actually, often that's not very clinically apparent, so we don't see that many patients at that point. But we know that when we do, what's going on is that a critical decision is being made within the immune response, and some people are able to mount a particular kind of immune response using cells called T-cells. And if those cells appear to function well, then the virus can be very well contained. The virus is quite tricky, and unfortunately the immune response sometimes is left with a gap and the the virus can sort of sneak through. And so trying to understand the differences between the responses and the people that clear the virus and the people that don't so well contain it, that's really been the focus of our research. And what are the most important lines of research that have developed over the past five or ten years? What we've been trying to do is really pick apart the the differences between the groups of people who contain hepatitis C and the, and the majority of people who become chronically infected, and try and understand in more detail what it is about the T-cells and the genes that control those that um, disting- distinguish those two groups of people. Um, we understand that the innate immune system, so these are features of the immune system that happen really very early, we understand that that's important, um, but we also now know that many features of the T-cells, particularly what bits of the virus they recognise, how strong those responses are, what kinds of things that the cells make to contain the virus. All those things add up to a quality of immune response which is protective. And why does your line of research matter? Why should we put money into it? Well, uh, hepatitis C is the major reason that people's livers fail in this country and the major indication for liver transplantation. So if we can do anything to protect people from hepatitis C and protect against the liver disease it causes, I think that's a good thing. Hepatitis C is a big problem globally. So we think about 170 million people in the world have got hepatitis C. The related virus hepatitis B affects 300 million people, so that's nearly 1 in 12 people in the world have got one of these viruses. And they're a major cause of liver disease and liver cancer. So producing vaccines for hepatitis C, producing better treatments for hepatitis C, these are really important things that could affect the lives of millions of people. And how does your research fit into translational medicine within the department? So what we've tried to do is take all those findings that I was describing about the different types of immune response that help clear the virus and try and generate vaccines that basically produce those responses in advance so that when somebody encounters hepatitis C, their immune response is ready to go and can contain the virus. So we've made quite a a lot of progress in generating vaccines of that kind and we've put them into healthy donors We've also tried to use that technology to improve the immune response of people who've already been infected. So we're hoping that we can use our knowledge of of the immunology to help us uh, protect people from hep C and even cure them of hep C. Thank you, Paul.